In this video, we're going to talk about how to determine the final temperature of an ice water mixture. So in this example, we have 25 grams of ice dropping into 50 grams of water. So if you want a picture, here's a visual. So let's say this is the liquid water at 30 degrees Celsius, and then we have an ice cube dropped into it at negative 20. So because the water is at a higher temperature than the ice cube, heat is going to flow from the water to the ice cube. So the temperature of the water is going to decrease from 30 to some value. And ice, the temperature of ice is going to increase from negative 20 to some number. Now chances are some of the ice is going to melt. We don't know how much or if all of it is going to melt. But we need to find the final temperature of the mixture. If some of the ice melts at equilibrium, then the final temperature has to be zero. If all of the ice melts, then the final temperature is going to be above zero degrees Celsius. Now, we can't just write an equation right now and know what the final temperature is, because if some of the ice melts, it's going to be, the equation is going to be different compared to if all of the ice melts. So what we need to do is get some numbers to see where the final temperature will be and then we could design the equation. So for instance, let's say if only some of the ice melts, then we need Q1, which represents the energy required to heat up ice from negative 20 to zero. Q2, the energy that's required to melt some of the ice. And then Q3, that's the energy that's released as water cools down to ice. And Q4, as some of the water probably freezes into ice, which you probably don't need. Because if Q2 represents the melting of ice, then water is just going to stop at zero degrees Celsius. So this is the equation we need if some of the ice melts, but not all of it. Now, let's say if all of the ice melts, we need Q1. That's the heat required to heat up ice from negative 20 to zero. Q2, that's the energy to melt all of the ice. And now we have liquid water. So now we got to raise the temperature of the cold water sample. Now Q4 would be the energy release when the hot water sample releases energy. So as you can see, based on where the final temperature is located, we could have a different equation. And so that's why we can't know which equation to use right now. Now, what I'm going to do is calculate how much energy will be released if the hot water sample goes from 30 to 0 just before it freezes. So I'm going to calculate Q4, which is going to be MC delta T. So the mass is 50 grams. The specific heat capacity is 4.18 joules per gram per Celsius. And the change in temperature going from 30 to 0 is negative 30 degrees Celsius. So 50 times 4.18 times negative 30, that's negative 6270 joules. So that's how much energy is released when 50 grams of water cools down. Let's see how much energy is absorbed by the ice. So first, the temperature of the ice has to go up from negative 20 to 0 degrees Celsius. So we need to use the same equation again, M cap. So the mass of the ice is 25. The specific heat capacity is about 2 joules per gram per Celsius. And the change in temperature going from negative 20 to 0, the temperature is increasing. So the change is 20. 25 times 2 times 20 is 1,000. So definitely some of the ice is going to melt. The temperature is definitely going to go from negative 20 to 0. Now let's see how much energy is required to melt the ice. So Q2, that's going to be the mass times the enthalpy. The mass is 25 grams of ice. The enthalpy of fusion is given to us. It's 333 joules per gram 
It's also 6 kilojoules per mole, but this value is easier to use since we already have the number of grams. As you can see, the unit grams will cancel. And 25 times 333 is 8,325 joules. Now, we need the total energy that's absorbed by the ice to equal the energy that's released by the water. Because these values are greater than that value, ignoring the sign, then we know that not all of the ice will melt, only some of it. So therefore, the final temperature has to be zero degrees. The temperature of the water is going to drop from 30 to zero. And at that time, the ice is still going to be melting. So most of the ice will melt, but not all of it. So let's calculate how many grams of ice will melt in this problem. Because we already know that the final temperature is zero. There's no calculation needed for that part. So Q1 plus Q2 has to equal Q4 in this example. The total energy released has to equal the total energy absorbed. So keep this in mind. This value here is not going to be 83.25 at equilibrium. It's going to be 52.70 because 1,000 plus 52.70 is equal to 62.70. So this is how we're going to set up the equation. Now we know what the situation is going to be at equilibrium. Q1 is going to be mc delta t. Q2 is going to be m delta h. And Q4, that's mc delta t. So if you want to plug in, we're going to get these numbers again. So this is going to be 50 times, actually, that's 25. Now C is 2, and uh, delta T is 20 for Q1. So that value is going to be 1,000 again. And I'm going to leave this alone for now. And Q4, M is 50, C is 4.18, delta T is negative 30. So Q1, which is, we know it's 1,000, plus Q2, which is M delta H, that's equal to Q4, which is going to be negative 6,270. Now, one thing I need to do is add a negative sign to the equation. So Q1 plus Q2 has to equal negative Q4. Because Q4 is an exothermic value, and Q1 and Q2 is endothermic, in order to make the equation balanced, we need to add a negative sign. 5 cannot equal negative 5. But if we add a negative to negative 5, then 5 equals 5. So then this negative is going to make this value positive, And now it's going to work. So m delta h is going to be 6270 minus 1,000. So q2, as we said before, that's going to be positive 5,270. Now we have delta H, which is 333 joules per gram. And so to find how many grams of ice will melt, it's going to be 5,270 divided by 333. So M in this example is 15.8 grams. So that's how many grams of ice melts. So not all of the 25 grams of ice melts, only a portion of it. And because some of the ice melts, but not all of it, that's why we know the final temperature is zero degrees Celsius. So this is the answer. Now this time we have a similar problem, but with different numbers. This time we have a lot more water than ice, 250 grams of water compared to 15 grams of ice. And the temperature of the water is very high. So I wanted to design this problem so that all of the ice melts. But let's make sure, because if you have a homework problem, you have to test it out to know if that's going to be the case. So let's see how much energy is required, or how much energy is released if all of the water goes down from 90 to 0. So it's going to be mc delta t again. 
So we have 250 grams of water. The specific, excuse me, the specific heat capacity is still the same. And a change in temperature is going to be from 90 to 0, or negative 90. So 250 times 4.18 times negative 90. That's negative 94,050 joules. So let's see if that is enough energy to completely melt all of the 15 grams of ice. So Q1, that's going to be mc delta t. That's just the energy required to heat up ice from negative 10 to 0. So the mass is 15 grams. The specific heat capacity is 2. And the change in temperature is positive 10. So 15 times 10 times 2 is 300. So it doesn't take much energy to heat up the small amount of ice that we have. Now, Q2, that's going to be to melt the ice. So that's M delta H. So we only have 15 grams of ice. And the enthalpy of fusion is 333 joules per gram. So that's going to be 4,995 joules. So notice that the total energy released is greater than the energy absorbed that's required to heat up ice and melt at the same time. So all of the ice is going to turn to liquid water. So we need to heat up the liquid water using this equation. Now we don't know the final temperature, but at least we know the number of Q's that is involved in this equation. So we need Q1, that is to heat up the ice to 0 degrees Celsius, Q2, that is to melt all of the ice, Q3, that's to raise the temperature of the cold water sample, and Q4 is to cool down the temperature of the hot water sample. So we already know that Q1 is 300, and Q2 is 4,995. Q3, that's going to be mc delta t, and Q4 is also mc delta t. Now, Q4 will no longer be this value because the final temperature doesn't have to be zero. So we can't use that number for Q4. Now, let's go ahead and figure this out. So let's add these two values, 300 plus 4,995. That's 5,295. And the mass of ice, which is now cold water, that's 15. And the specific heat capacity of the cold water sample is 4.18. And the change in temperature is going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Once the ice is melted to liquid water, the current temperature is 0. So we're going to put 0 there. And then the mass of the hot water temperature, that's 250, with a specific heat capacity of the same thing, 4.18. And the initial temperature of the hot water sample is 90. So our goal is to solve for Tf. Fifteen times four point eighteen, that's sixty two point seven. Now we don't have to worry about the zero, so we're gonna have just sixty two point seven Tf. On the right side, 250 times 4.18, that's 1045, and then we got to distribute that to TF minus 90, so we're going to have 1045 TF, and then we got to multiply 1045 times negative 90, which is negative 94,050. Now, something that I almost forgot to do is to add a negative sign, which we must do anytime we're dealing with a heat transfer problem. So I'm going to have negative Q4, so I'm going to put the negative sign on the right side, which means this is going to be negative and this is going to be positive. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 1045 TF to both sides. And at the same time, I'm going to subtract 5295 from both sides. So 
So these two values will cancel, and those two values will cancel. So it's 62.7 plus 1045. So that's going to be 1107.7 TF, and that's equal to 94,050 minus 5295, which is 88,755. So now let's divide both sides by this number to get TF by itself. So the final temperature is going to be 80.1 degrees Celsius. So that's the final temperature of the mixture. Now, if you want to check the work to make sure it's correct, we need to make sure that once we reach the final temperature, the energy released is equal to the total energy absorbed. So let's see if that's the case. So let's start with the total energy absorbed. So first we need to heat up the ice. We have 15 grams. The specific heat capacity is 2. And the change in temperature is going from negative 10 to 0. So that's a change in positive 10, which we know this to be 300. And then Q2 to melt the ice, that's M times delta H, which is 15 grams times 333 joules per gram. And that's 4,995. Next, we have Q3, the energy to heat up the cold water sample. So we're going to use MC delta T. So we have 15 grams, a specific heat capacity of 4.18, and the change in temperature is going from the initial is 0, the final is 80.1, or a more exact answer is 80.13. So that's an increase of 80.13. So this is going to be 5,024.15, or just 50.24. So the total energy absorbed if we add those three values, is about 10,319 joules. Now let's find the total energy release, which is Q4. So that's basically MCAT. It's just going to be negative. So the mass is 250 grams. C is the same, 4.18. The change in temperature, the final, is 80.13, and the initial is 90. And so this is going to be negative 10,314. It's not exact, but it's close enough, which tells us that the final temperature is indeed 80.13 or 80.1. So that's the answer to this question.